Welcome to Holly EFI training part 14. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to tune our main fuel table. Now, when we jump into our Holly software, we're going to be noticing we have two primary types of fuel strategies we have to work with. We have our speed density fuel flow rate based strategy, which is an injection time based model. And then we have our volumetric efficiency based fuel strategy and modeling. They're going to be two different ways that we can go about accomplishing the exact same task, which is delivering the fuel into our engine. It's going to be important that we understand what the differences is and how we need to go in and tune each kind of fuel strategy. So we're going to take a look at that in this video, as well as taking a look at the similarities between either strategy of working with our breakpoints into the table and making sure that you have your load set into the table based on the map sensor you're working with correct based on the application that we're working with. So we have adequate resolution and we have enough breakpoints or cell points in the table to be able to deliver our fuel accurately and properly. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check all this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our main fuel table tuning in our Holly EFI software. We're going to find that we have two primary types of fuel strategy calculations that can be performed. We're either going to have a speed density fuel flow rate based table or a volumetric efficiency based fuel table. Now, they're both going to accomplish the same task, which is going to be telling the injector to open and close a certain amount of injector pulse width to deliver the fuel in the engine, but they're gonna be going about it in two different manners. So what we're gonna start off with first here is a fuel fl flow rate base table, um, and then we're gonna move into our VE base and towards the end of the video, and then I can illustrate the differences between them so you'll understand exactly what each represents, and then make a decision of what you wanna work with in your tuning strategy. Now, I prefer VE based tuning, but the fuel flow rate still is going to work just fine. So there's no right or wrong way to go about using either strategy. So if you're gonna be tuning, let's say, naturally aspirated or forced induction, either will adequately supply the fuel to the engine. Again, they just go about the calculations a bit different, but we need to know what those differences are so that we're gonna be able to work with either situation, either strategy, and be able to perform the proper calibration techniques. So let's talk about the similarities here between either fuel strategies, and that's going to be our breakpoints we have in our table. So we can see our fuel table here, on our axis is based on map pressure, and then the other is gonna be based on engine RPM. So on our map pressure here, we can see that this particular table is gonna go from 105 kPa to two kPa. So essentially zero to 100 kPa. That represents one bar of operating scale on a map sensor. So in this situation, this table would be suited to a naturally aspirated engine. 100 kPa would be atmospheric pressure. We're not gonna go much higher than atmospheric pressure on a naturally aspirated engine. If we're gonna be in a force induction engine, we are gonna go higher than the last break point in the table here. We're gonna go higher than 105 kPa. As we get up above 100 kPa, that's gonna be positive manifold pressure. So 200 kPa is approximately 15 pounds of boost. 300 kPa is approximately 30 pounds of boost. 400 kPa is gonna be approximately uh, 45 pounds of boost, um, give or take. And we're gonna find as we go up higher and higher in boost, we need to compensate for that. We need to know what our positive manifold pressure is going to be at so that when we're trying to figure out what the fuel delivery is going to be, it's gonna track that position in the table, just as it would here between zero and essentially 100 kPa. So that's gonna be one of the first considerations when you're setting up your table and you're gonna get things dialed in. You need to make sure uh, before you do any actual tuning and calibrating that you have the map sensor type set for the application that you're working with, and then you're gonna be making sure that your breakpoints are gonna be adequate and they're going to make sense. So let's just quickly review this. If we go into sensors here, we go into map pressure. We can see right now the sensor type here is set on the Holly one bar. So um, that's why the table here represents one bar of operating range from 100 kPa all the way down to essentially zero kPa. So if we jump back in here, if I change my map sensor, let's say we change it to a two bar. We're gonna say, yes, it's gonna tell us it's gonna rescale the table. Jump back in here, notice now that the table goes to 210 kPa or approximately 15 pounds of boost. So it goes here from zero to 210. And if we go to the map pressure here and we change it to a three bar. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.